For centuries, the Shroud of Turin has been a riddle wrapped in linen. Claimed as proof, dismissed as myth, it now faces its toughest critic, AI. What it found isn't an image, but an anomaly, a code hidden in the threads, a design that defies ancient weaving. Is it a trick of light, a divine sign, or something more unsettling? The Shroud, a canvas of controversy, 14 feet long, 3 feet wide, woven with precision. Upon it, the ghostly imprint of a man, wounds telling a silent story. Marks on the wrists, a spear's piercing blow, the brutal crown of thorns. The face is serene, eyes closed, hair floating as if weightless. First appearing in France, it drew crowds and skepticism. Passed between hands, it found refuge in Turin in 1578. Fire and near destruction marked its history. Now, encased in climate, control it hides within a cathedral. But a photograph in 1898 changed everything. Secondo Pia captured its image, expecting chaos. Instead, the negative revealed startling clarity. A face emerged, defined and real. Not proof, but a shift. The shroud moved from faith to science. Labs dissected fibers. Microscopes scanned the surface. Forensics examined the bloodstains. Pollen placed it in the eastern Mediterranean. Results twisted the debate, never resolving it. The shroud gave enough to demand more. The image is unlike any pigment. No brush strokes. No depth. Color sits on the surface, kissed by light. Intensity mirrors the distance from a body, a claim both extraordinary and measurable. Attempts to recreate it failed. The shroud remained singular. Then came the dating. In 1988, three labs dated a corner to the 13th, 14th centuries. Closure for many. Medieval origin solved. But the sample site, a handled, repaired edge, cast doubt. Could later threads skew the results? The debate mutated. If the date is right, it's a medieval marvel. If wrong, its age is open. The shroud resists definition, a negative before photography, a surface without pigment, a spatial relationship hinting at depth, her contested age raising questions about sampling, reverence and rigor clash. Then a new voice, computation. It sought patterns too faint to see, too vast to grasp. The machine wasn't biased. It sought a better question. What haven't we measured? Photography revealed the face. Chemistry mapped the fibers. What happens when AI listens to linen? And in 88, radiocarbon promised closure. Oxford, Zurich, Arizona. One protocol. A sample cut, divided, cleaned, tested. Results, 1260, 1390. Newspapers declared it decisive. The chosen corner analyzed more than I, any artifact. Countless hands touched it. Repairs followed a 16th century fire. Textile chemist Raymond Rogers found chemical differences. Cotton mixed with linen. Residues suggesting dyes. Later material would skew results. Defenders cited lab validation. Critics pointed to heterogeneous repair. Other methods emerged. X-ray. Scattering estimated earlier dates. Critics cited humidity and heat. Supporters stressed technique convergence. Pollen from the Levant suggested movement, not origin. It hinted at antiquity, not proof. Access is the key. The shroud isn't a lab sample, but a guarded relic. Sampling is limited. One test leans on a small region. Probability takes over. A misrepresentation dominates. A few threads become a thesis. If 1988 is right, it's a medieval genius. It doesn't. Explain the image. If wrong, it reopens the field, including the first centuries. Not proof of Jesus, but a restored question. AI arrives, impartial. It touches data, not corners. AI can't date linen, but it can examine images at unseen resolutions. It tests intensity variations, compares blood interactions, examines symmetries. A companion, not a replacement. The investigation must continue. When a method says closed, but the effect says not yet. Design a new test. The shroud whispers anomalies. Lenses and reagents give way to algorithms. High resolution photos exist, but feeding images into systems trained to detect weak signals is different. Principal component analysis removes variance. Convolutional nets search for shapes. 
Frequency filters expose hidden behavior. Techniques rearrange information, revealing patterns. Initially, confirmation was expected. A face, a torso, hands, stains. Instead, unsettling order appeared. Not. Brush strokes or stamps. A rule no one wrote. Do these simulations tested an older question? Could contact alone form the image? Areas touching would mark heavily, others lightly. Contact maps produced distortions. Digital artists draped virtual cloth, revealing distortions unlike the shroud's proportions. Cloth over a shallow relief improved the fit. Conclusion. Contact. Alone wasn't enough. Distance mapping seemed involved. AI examined pixel intensity as image depth. Darker meant nearer. Lighter meant farther. If painted, the correlation would break down. If transferred from a relief, fibers would show inconsistent directionality. The image encoded spatial information without mass. Careful words. No projection claimed. Only the observation that intensity resembles a mathematical surface more than a painterly one. Discoloration sits on outer fibrils. Edges are soft. Lasers struggle to reproduce such a shallow effect. What process imparted energy so precisely, altering only the top fibers in a distance gradient? Researchers layered spectrally distinct images, noting a faint symmetry around the face and chest. It didn't match fabric folds or camera artifacts. The pattern repeated. It survived noise removal. Randomized regions served as controls. Skepticism demands it's an artifact until proven otherwise. Curiosity seeks repetition when methods change. If an accident, we should see disorder. If art tool marks, if neither, we've met an unknown process. AI just found relies on existing data overlooked until now. Patterns surfaced beneath the face, ratios echoing across brow, lip, chin, curves mirroring ribs and shoulders, hands shared recurrences. Unlike the weave, geometry persisted under light, surviving illusion tests. How can symmetry hide for centuries? Skeptics proposed confirmation bias. Researchers used neutral techniques, stripping assumptions. The result wasn't a face, but a field, where brightness rose and fell, obeying a law. What kind of law? Can cloth map unseen forces? Others warned of halos in processing. Analysts returned to raw captures from different decades. The structure remained. Control linens produced different artifacts. Conclusion. The shroud's image is different. What held the geometry stable? Bloodstains raised questions. They seemed irrelevant with ratios continuing beneath them. The image and stains were separate. Did one event mark the cloth chemically while another etched its geometry? Two overlapping histories, whispers grew louder. If the image looks like a field, perhaps it came from one. Models of discharge and events have been tested, but none explain the coloring or mapping. The mechanism remains unknown. One physicist, this behaves like a phenomenon. What writes order onto linen without tools? The shroud exists in two arenas, public headlines and private experiments. AI's findings spread carefully. Teams tried to break the geometry, but failed. Others sought echoes in linens, but none showed the same persistence. One team called it spatial intelligence in degradation. Another, a decaying signal. Theology reacted predictably. Some believers claimed it's a resurrection fingerprint. Others urged restraint, reminding that science can't reproduce a unique event. Faith accepts uniqueness. Science resists it. Scientists feared haste. Claims must be measured, repeated, published, doubted. Can this rhythm survive the modern world? The Vatican remained silent, likely cautious. Let the data speak. In tech, AI earned respect. It counted, mapped, asked for. More counting. Could neutrality make AI the fairest judge? New questions multiplied. Does the pattern appear only in the face? Does it follow thread direction? Could advanced microscopy confirm superficial color? Could a new radiocarbon plan silence the dating debate? Each question promises years of work. What if the shroud isn't alone? Could cousins exist in collections? If one is found, the mystery becomes natural. If none exist, the shroud stands isolated, raising the stakes. Which is more unsettling, kinship or loneliness? Does uniqueness make the shroud a gift 
a trick or an unsolvable riddle? Speculation begins in chemistry. Linen carries cellulose layered with impurities. A carbohydrate film could be vulnerable to oxidation. A brief energy burst could dehydrate. That layer, leaving yellowing microns. If distance modulated the burst, intensity could map across the cloth. Yet ultraviolet light burns too deeply and heat diffuses too slowly. Corona discharges work superficially, but blur the edges. Can any combination meet all conditions? Physics offers paths. Could fields alter fiber crowns while sparing the cores? Might a brief plasma event etch the surface more delicately than heat? Laboratory experiments produce hints, but not the whole picture. Each method solves one piece while breaking another. Is the puzzle unsolvable? What tool can burn so shallowly and precisely? Some look backward. Could artisans have stumbled upon a lost technique? Sculptures, chemical washes, sunlight might mimic shading. But studies reveal no pigment binders, no deep penetration, no diffusion. Where are the traces? Can any known technique create a negative? Image with intensity mapping. Bolder theories reach further. What if the shroud records a single energy event at burial, radiation structured by the body itself? To believers, a miracle. To scientists, an undefined variable. Would such an event leave byproducts? Where should we look? Where should we look? Information theory offers another frame. The shroud's image behaves like a signal, its faint geometry like a carrier wave. If it's a signal, it's a record. Could compression tests reveal if it is robust or fragile? Is the shroud a smooth decay captured in linen or data we lack the code to read? Could AI one day decode it not as an image but as information? Every investigation stalled on answers must love questions. The right question is how, not who. What process, not when. The shroud trained us to argue identities. The machine trained us to argue order. What order appears when an image forms without pigment, with superficiality so slight? What order persists under light? What order ignores stains? Some viewers crave closure. Proof of divinity or forgery? It's proof of neither. It's evidence that image formation is more rule-bound, that admission is a gift. It turns spectacle into experiment. It invites physics students, chemists, engineers, custodians. The better. Question asks about humility. What if we can't reproduce the image soon? Do we accept that some puzzles deserve decades? The shroud has lasted through everything. AI can guide priority. Map where geometry is strongest. Map where intensity mapping is weakest. Propose the smallest interventions. The machine becomes a planner. The better question whispers about danger. What if the structure is intentional? Order implies authorship. Motives, devotion, deception, demonstration, every path unsettles. A medieval artisan with lost techniques would unsettle. Unknown radiation would unsettle. A sign challenging centuries would unsettle most of all. We risk finding that the cloth resists every category we trust. If the image has a cause, minds will find it. If it doesn't, it will continue to be a mirror where people see themselves. Believers seeing a sign, skeptics seeing credulity. Terrifying. Doesn't mean supernatural, it means category breaking. The more they looked, the less the shroud resembled anything they knew. Artifact or phenomenon, tool or law. It threatens method. Measure first, sort later. Difficult when centuries press on your shoulders, Imagine accepting that the image behaves like a phenomenon without naming it. Build experiments whose failure doesn't discredit the case. Publish negative results. Force yourself to write a constraint. There is another terror that lives on the other side of wonder. What if we were never meant to reduce this? That sentence is dangerous, yet resonates with researchers who have failed to make the linen speak. Language may always lag by a beat. That is not a surrender. It is a patience that sets young scientists free. We might be walking toward a cause. We might be walking toward acceptance. In both cases, the walk matters. The shroud has already given science a gift by forcing it to talk to faith without shouting. The shroud of Turin has been a relic, hoax, icon, and puzzle. Now it is also a data set that taught AI humility. The machine confirmed its strangeness, shallow penetration, Geometry without pigment, intensity mapping to distance. It issued a challenge. Show the tool, show the law. 
There is an order here. That exceeds our explanation. That is not frightening, it is beautiful. It keeps the doors open, inviting scientists, experiments, and reverence for truth. What do you think this order points to? Which constraint would you test first? If you believe, mysteries deserve care, subscribe and stay.